This is really cool. I'm so happy we're getting a chance to have this conversation with our next guest. He is the closer for the Oakland A's. He went to Bethel Park High School. He went to college at Waynesburg, Mm -hmm. then to Gardner-Webb, and now to the major leagues. Mason Miller is with us here on 93.7 The Fan. Mason, are you a big fan of Moneyball? Have you seen that movie? Several times. <laughs> you like it good. Guys, is, that your, is that your favorite uh, baseball movie ever? And if it isn't, what is? I think by by association now, it kind of has to be. Yeah. That's right. Pitching good for call. the A's. Right, exactly. Although I always thought it was kind of uh, a shame in that movie, Mason. This might be a little bit before your time, but there's no no mention of the pitchers. Tim Hudson, Barry Zito. Mark Mulder. Yeah, they had great pitchers back then, and they yeah, get short shrift think- there. I think I just saw today, actually, somebody talking about that. I can't remember who it was, but they, they were saying Barry Zito and Mark Mulder, you know, they had the rotation, no mention of, like, Tejada and those guys either. So, right. You know, it's showmanship. It's the movies, you know. Well, yeah, when they're showing Billy Koch, it's him blowing the uh, the game against the Royals so Hatterberg can hit his big home run. They're even they're Chris putting Pratt. a relief pitcher in there, and, yeah, they're putting him in a bad spot. Hey, Mason, uh, you're, you could say from the outside looking in that your life is very hollywood ask what a story to get to where you are right now just tell us do you pinch yourself that you've been on this journey and now you are where you are one of the best pitchers in all of baseball well you know i was just sitting here yesterday doing a couple media things with some of the the pirates the pirates uh media staff and i think this is probably one of the moments you know yankee stadium was was one of those moments but you know playing against the the team i grew up rooting for uh, you know, it's definitely like surreal, full circle like moment. You know, from the days when I was getting on the getting on the tee and going down and watching <laughs> the game at Peter Park. You know, now to be on the same field as guys like veteran South Hills <laughs> resident move uh, to the, take the, the tee. Very useful for the South Hills, but man, we got to get some service elsewhere. What here. was the move, Washington Junction? Is that where you got on? <laughs> uh, yeah, Mason? I, we had to stop uh, all the way out towards the end of the line. Library it was like five minutes. Oh, ah, that's so right. I, Mason, much start to finish. So the other thing about your story, it, like we say, it's it's Hollywood esque. It would be almost like a for me one of those superhero origin stories where and it's got I can't imagine what it's like to go through. You have this this uh, drug test you've got to take for like a finance internship, right? Like the finance department of a hospital, and it pops that you you know up. Oh, you failed this and you get mad. You say, no, hold on, do this again. And then they tell you eventually gets to the point you have type one diabetes. I cannot imagine in that moment thinking that finding that out eventually in some way helps lead you to the point where your fastball gains like 15 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. It's like Peter Parker being bitten by the radioactive spider. I don't mean that to be glib, but it's like the worst day of your life in some ways becomes a gateway to what has, has now turned into just an unbelievable story here, man. Can you describe that? situation itself and then what followed it yeah i mean that that was one of the most shocking days of my life for sure uh you know i mean at 20 years old that wasn't something i was expecting um you know it's a something that usually you get diagnosed with at a young age and you know being a little older that wasn't something that you know i thought would ever happen to me you know obviously i was dealing with a lot of issues health wise so just quality of life you know i mean that was just enormous for me to just get to a point where day-to-day life wasn't wasn't really hard um and then everything else that's that kind of stemmed from it's been you know just cherry on top you know and now i'm living out my dream uh once the diabetes diagnosis mason like when did you start really this transformation from kid that was a really good high school pitcher good enough to pitch in college to becoming a legitimate major league prospect like what was the breakthrough moment for you well, I got diagnosed at the end of my 2018 season, and then my junior year, 2019 at Waynesburg, was kind of my break, my breakout year. Uh, had a had a great year that year, uh, and then I had a little interest. I did a workout for the Pirates, um, and that was kind of the first moment where it was like a you know a slim possibility. But at that point, you know, I was still pitching Division Three. You know, there's a lot of a lot of guys playing at higher levels at that point, and you yeah. know, I really had no perception you know, what my chances were going to be, you know, moving forward. What, when did you, and maybe there's like a two-parter here, how quickly did the increased velocity come and to what degree? And do you think there's still like another level for you to get to? (laughs) I know that's insane to say to somebody who's touching 104 just about, but like what was the process by which you started adding velocity and, and becoming borderline unhittable at the college level? Honestly, I mean, I had a really good foundation as far as just my, you know, 
what I did, how I worked out and everything. I just wasn't seeing results. So, you know, once I kind of got stuff figured out from a health standpoint and then started seeing those results show up from the, you know, the programming and, you know, the work I was doing, uh, you know, I kind of just put a little, little extra wind at my back and you know, I just really, really took to it. I was like 94, I think 94, 95 that junior year. So really after that, it's just been like small incremental, like year over year, just adding like another mile an hour or two. So I think I'm, I'm pretty, pretty close to my ceiling as far as Velo, um, you know, just from a body standpoint, you know, it's always been like put on a little bit more weight, you know, mm -hmm. stronger, clean up some mechanics, but you know, I'm at the point now where at the highest level, it's kind of like, I'm where I want to be physically. And now it's just a matter of, you know, making sure I can stay on the field and be healthy and do this for a long time. Mason Miller, ace closer, Bethel Park in Waynesburg, our guest here, Pirates and A's. Tonight on the fan, you can listen to the game, 940 first pitch and the North Shore Tavern leadoff show hosted by a Waynesburg alum, Donnie Football, <laughs> comes your way at 845. Uh, Mason, you mentioned you were a Pirates fan, so I'm guessing you watched Araldus Chapman pitch against the Pirates with the Reds during those you know, great years for the Pirates and when they went to the playoffs the three years in a row. Did you ever picture yourself throwing as hard as him? <laughs> <laughs> no, no shot. I mean, at, at that point, I mean, Chapman was, I don't want to say the only guy. I'm sure there's some other guys throwing hard at that point, but that was definitely the most notable guy that was just throwing jet fuel every time out. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he he's a mountain of a man, that's for sure. Um, I mean, still now, you know, if you watch him walk on the field, he's he's bigger than a lot of people, maybe not a Neil Cruz, but, you know, he's he's a specimen for sure, and there's a reason he's been able to do what he's done for so long. So... Obviously, any game where you're not called upon to pitch in a way can be a very good thing for the athletics. It means potentially, at least, that they're winning by a lot and they don't need you to close it down in the ninth. But you've yet to pitch against the Pirates. What's it going to be like if you're out there? Oh. It's three to two tonight, bottom not or top nine, and you've got to slam the doors. Is there going to be a little extra butterflies seeing your hometown team that you grew up rooting for trying to get hits off you and string together some runs? It's all it's all business when I get out there. Um, <laughs> that is I mean, terrifying I, to hear but, from a guy but, who throws 103. That's a closer mentality. That's, that's Mossy, horrifying. Is what that is. Yes, that's horrifying. If I'm standing in the box and you're saying it's all business, I'm very scared. Well, that's the that's the way I want it to be. So I guess that's good. Mason Miller, our guest here. Uh, Mason, um, let me ask you about your family here. Who do you think is the closest person to you, family wise? who will probably still root for the Pirates, even with you in the game tonight? <laughs> Family-wise, I think I think I got got them all converted. I think okay. they're, they're Mason fans first. Uh, yeah, I mean, some of, some of my buddies have texted me and said, you know, hey, I'm rooting for the Pirates for eight innings until you come into the game. But, <laughs> yeah, I think I think I got a, I got a good sport, swayed, swayed the Pittsburgh crowd a little bit. Uh, has there been a guy you've faced so far as a major league pitcher that was your holy bleep. I'm actually doing this in the major leagues moment. Uh, it has to be Otani. Yeah. I mean, last year, last year when I came up, they were, Angels were my second start. Uh, they scored scored four runs on me in the first. So I was kind of like, you know, I gotta kind of lock it in the second time through the order. Um, and I I struck out Otani and then Trout back to back, and that was oh. that was my first like, you know, big big moment of like these guys are some of the best hitters in the game and they have been for a while and you know i just went one two you know two k's so that was that, that i'd have to say that i mean you're at that point you have to in the back of your mind realize i just struck out back to back two guys who will be in cooperstown someday yeah like those two guys are going to be in the hall of fame and good night one you know bye bye see ya like that i, I just can't imagine getting wrapping my head around that the journey you had been on to that point yeah, dude. I mean, it's been it's been a crazy journey, no doubt. I mean, you know, like you've touched on just, you know, six years ago, five years ago, would I have pictured myself here? Absolutely not. Um, yeah, you were hanging out just, with the Donnie footballs of the world. Yeah, you're down, down, in, you're down in Green County. There's not a whole lot going on down you know, in Green County. You got County. Lanny Frateri lecturing students about how to get their sports casts right down there, uh, Mason. <laughs> man. That's, <laughs> see, it feels like a long time ago now. That's crazy to think about. Uh, hey, Mason, before we let you run, just wanted to give you this chance to to put this out there. Give us one person or maybe two back here in Pittsburgh who you look at and say, I would not be considered one of the elite closers 
in Major League Baseball if not for what these people back in Pittsburgh and Bethel Park and Waynesburg did for me to get here? Yeah, I mean, the first one has to be one of my high school coaches, Joe Rinaldi. Uh He he helped me get to Gardner Webb, uh, being close with Jim Chester, who was a former former Pittsburgh guy as well. Um, you know, he I had a great relationship with him in high school, and you know, he kept in touch with me through my time at Waynesburg, and was always just a, a great resource for me. Just uh, you know, I, even just outside of baseball, yeah. um, and. You know, we got lunch, lunch this off season. So just having having guys like that that you run into along your baseball journey. You know, every player has that kind of that kind of coach or that kind of friend that you've developed. Um, you know, throughout your career. So you know, it's always going to be somebody. The baseball world's it's big, but it's also small, and everybody knows most everybody. So yeah, I have to give Coach Joe his roses for sure. Uh, and then really, I mean. I go to for with my parents. I mean, they they did a lot for me growing up, uh, getting me to games and everything as a kid, and then supporting me through high school, supporting me at college, um, supporting me through my diagnosis and the journey to now. Um, so yeah, I've been incredibly blessed with you know people throughout my life that have supported me at the good times and the bad times, and you know all the way up to to now in the big leagues. Well, you're definitely an inspiration, Mason, to uh, kids here that are playing baseball, uh, people living with diabetes, and underdogs to go from where you were to where you are now. So uh, I'd say good luck tonight. I kind of mean it. I kind of don't because I am rooting for the Pirates, but your I story is tremendous. One, I think they're the ones who need the luck if they're staring back at him, Pony. It's Agreed. probably wish Pirates hitters good yes, luck if Mason right. Miller's in the game. Uh, we'll be watching you, Mason, and keeping tabs on you, brother. Congratulations on all your success, and uh, we'll be in touch, okay? Awesome. Thank you, guys. You bet. Appreciate you having me. Mason Miller.